welcome you back to the second of three panel discussions we're doing today centered on new surveys and analysis by the Pew Research Center on the millennials, the generation of teens and 20-somethings who, as we know, are turning out to be distinctly different from the younger generations that preceded them. One of the things that most distinguishes them, some say defines them, is technology. Uh, their use of cell phones, laptop computers, and not only the internet, but social networking sites to communicate with each other and to learn about what's happening in the rest of the world. When I first linked up with the Pew Research Center about five years ago on that reporting project for PBS and NPR to tell the story of this younger generation, I found young people eager to talk about how they interact with new media and how they get information. Here's just a minute's worth of what we heard. Please look at the screen. I get New York Times delivered daily um, on email. So I check, I usually do the internet news. Now what do I do here, you know, video games or law school? Video games, <laughs> law school. Video games are kind of, it's, it's a new medium. It's gonna be to the 21st century what film was to the 20th century. I feel like our generation kind of has ADD in terms of we can't just sit down and, you know, let's relax. Okay, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'd say quick, fast, in a hurry is pretty much our motto. We want it, we want it now. Just a, just a small sampling of what we heard. And to elaborate on millennials' media and information, we have another superb panel joining us. And I'm going to call them up one by one. The panel consists of first Dana Boyd. Please come up. She is a social media researcher with Microsoft Research. She's also a fellow at Harvard University's Berkman Center for Internet and Society. She has specialized in studying social media, Twitter, blogging, and social network sites like Facebook. She studied at MIT. She recently earned her PhD at the University of California at Berkeley. Dylan Casey, please come up. Where are you? Hi. Uh, Dylan is, seen, is search product manager for Google. After a successful career as a professional cyclist, including competing on the U.S. Olympic team, uh, Dylan joined Google in 2002, working on building products for Google Search, and he recently la launched its real-time search. 99% of the world is grateful to you, Dylan. <laughs> I don't know about the other 1%. Amanda Lenhart, please come up. She's Senior Research Specialist for the Pew Internet and American Life Project, which lives under uh, the wings of the Pew Research Center. She directs the project's research on teens, children, and families. Her other research specialties include education, gaming, and network communication tools like mobile phones, social networks, and blogging. And finally, the person who will present Pew's findings on this topic, Tom Rosensteel. Tom. Uh, founding director of the Pew Research Center's Project for Excellence in Journalism. The project specializes in studying the performance of the press, uh, appropriately so, since for 20 years Tom was a reporter for the Los Angeles Times and for Newsweek. He co-wrote a book on the elements of journalism that has become a Bible for journalism schools and for journalists across this country. Now, after Tom's presentation, the panel is going to trade comments among ourselves for about 45 minutes, and then we're going to take questions from you in the audience. Tom Rosensteel, the floor is yours. And if you'd rather come up here, if you feel this is easier for you, come on up, or you can do it from your chair. I'm I don't leave think that I up can to you. come up. All right, I'm you're tethered. chained to your chair, so I do am, it there. I am where I am. <laughs> I am who I am. Uh, and I, I'm glad that I'm the oldest uh, person on this panel uh, so that uh, we have uh, more uh, uh, points of view here. Um, what I'm going to do for uh, just a few minutes is talk a little bit about um, the media use and uh, news consumption uh, of millennials that we can infer uh, from the survey data and from uh, other data that uh, we look at. We look at a lot of stuff, a lot of data at the PRC. The, um, first of all, millennials, I think, as I pour through this stuff, it are the uh, leading edge of the of the spear. Uh, they're uh, doing things with technology and older generations I think are, are following. Um, 
uh, and we see this over time, uh, that um, uh, they'll do things and we think, that's nuts, that makes no sense, that's crazy, I'd never do that. And then two or three years later, we do that. Um, uh, how many of the uh, boomers are now on Facebook in this room? Um, as I look through the data, I think that uh, millennials uh, are what I would call on-demand grazers for news. They look for what they want, when they want it, uh, and they graze across lots of different um, sources, although uh, I think a limited number of sources, but they don't rely on a main source for news, I think. Uh, they share, they network, uh, they're um, mobile, they're connected uh, uh, when they're um, away from home. Uh, and as I look through the data, I think they're already changing their behavior, and I think uh, uh, Dana can talk about what she's seen in that regard. Um, I'm old enough now that I can't actually see that very clearly. <laughs> Either can um, I. As you can see from this slide, a lot of people think that technology makes life easier. Millennials are a little more likely to feel that way, but this doesn't really define them, I don't think. Um, but uh, one thing that where they do uh, jump out more is in the idea that it's a good thing to share all these pictures, to um, uh, post things about themselves, to say, I'm doing my laundry now while they're on Facebook uh, or whatever. I'm betraying some of my own uh, biases here. I shouldn't do that. Um, uh, look at the difference in terms of millennials being sell only. Now, will that change once they buy houses and uh, 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 and want to have potentially other phones, um, who knows? But right now, uh, no. Um, they're twice as likely to be as uh, Gen Xers and a lot more likely than others. Um, they are connected uh, wirelessly when they're away from home, through laptops, through uh, cell phones, to the internet. Um, and um, I was trying to uh, take the millennials quiz on my uh, phone uh, earlier, but I don't really know how to work the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you should have admitted that since, <laughs> but go ahead. It's okay. It's all right. I'm not going to talk about my kids like uh, Paul did. Um, this, this to me is interesting because look at uh, the change in behavior. Uh, millennials are less likely, a lot less likely, to blog than they were in 2007. So I think this is a caution to us that what we see people doing now with technology is, may not be necessarily what they're going to be doing later. Uh, I think the technology, well, I'll talk about this in a second, is not, it, it doesn't define them as much as reflect them. Uh, millennials uh, are more likely to uh, be on social networks, uh, to use uh, cell and text, but I suspect that uh, the rest of us are moving up, are following them in that regard. Um, uh, they're also more likely to uh, post video, to tweet. But these numbers are not huge, OK? Not everybody is doing this all the time, even uh, in the youngest generation. I wonder what it would be like if we had my 13-year-old daughter on there, but never mind. I wasn't going to talk about my kids. Um, now we get into where people get their news. Interesting, um, the television, this is both cable and broadcast and local that's in this number. Um, uh, uh, so they're watching television, actually a little more than Gen Xers, but certainly more than, uh, less than uh, older generation. The internet, um, clearly more. Uh, newspapers, uh, somewhat less, and I think there may be some noise in that lowest number. Um, radio, interestingly, is something that everybody uses, and it, the, the numbers aren't changing a lot over time on radio. So where are people going for news when they are um, uh, online? Well, the young, uh, this generation is uh, of those who are uh, online at all. 81% are online daily uh, for news. So uh, young people who are connected and who, get, uh, who are online get news online a lot. Uh, and I think that one of the things that's so uh, fascinating to me as I've watched this research over the years is the idea that young people were not interested in the outside world, I think, was wrong. The idea that young people were not interested in the old delivery systems, in appointment viewing, in having to consume your news at breakfast only, 
uh, that's what was uh, that's what was going on. Now that they have a delivery system that meets their their behavior, their needs, their personality, they're avid consumers. Uh, and uh, the data w I don't I don't have a slide on this, but during the election. Uh, this generation was as informed about politics as any other generation. Less so now that uh, politics is working so beautifully here in Washington that they don't have to pay attention. <laughs> Where are they going online for news? This slide to me is really interesting. They're going to aggregators. Yahoo, CNN, which is a site that's got a lot of material that's not CNN's, um, Google, uh, MSN. But you look on the right side of that slide at key brands like the New York Times or Fox or any of those, those are not places that uh, people describe as their main <coughs> news source. Uh, they see the internet as a news source and what are the options that are available there. In other words, they really are grazers. And we've got research that I'm not, that, we're, that will be released later uh, uh, that's not part of this report that indicates how widely they graze or not graze. I think they graze, but I don't think they graze everywhere. I don't think any of us do. So in sum, I would say that as I look at the data, but I'm <coughs> really intrigued to hear what our panels, uh, panelists have to say, technology reflects the personality of this generation, I think, rather than defines them. Uh, but predictions about them are very difficult to make. Uh, one reason is because I think millennials are already changing, uh, because as they, you know, uh, because the technology is changing, because their, their personalities are changing some. The other thing, and this is significant, the landscape is so different that actually asking millennials or any other generation what their media use is like versus what they were, what previous generations did is impossible to do because tweeting and a lot of these technologies didn't exist. We can't, we don't know what Gen Xers did when they were 18 in terms of tweeting. Um, we didn't have tweeting then. So, uh, some of the data that we can look at in, term, in other areas about religious attitudes, about uh, um, uh, 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 morality, about a host of other things that we can do longitudinally, we can't do when it comes to media use. So um, I think that uh, uh, we're going to have to turn to other researchers for that kind of thing, which tees up, I think, the rest of our group. That's great. Thank you, Tom Rosenstiel.